In this year's budget, Chancellor George Osborne has to meet some very tough targets. In order to balance the books by 2020, he's got to make savings of roughly £4 billion, the equivalent of 50p from every £100 spent by government. But having made many major promises, including keeping his hands off pensions, this leaves a higher possibility of widespread cuts. And for Londoners, the situation could be tough. This is the problem that the Chancellor has created for himself by saying that we're not going to cut these benefits, these middle-class perks, because then if you're going to reduce welfare spending, you're obviously going to necessarily have to do it on people who need it more. So it's an error in, you know, he's, back to, he's got himself into this corner and it's a ridiculous situation that we're in when he's thinking, you know, we're hearing about potentially cutting a billion from things like personal independence payments, but maintaining child benefit payments to households with incomes of, you know, up to £100,000, it's crazy. The cost of the individual taxpayer is one thing, but there are also concerns about how changes to this year's budget might affect the services of the 33 borough councils across the capital. And experts at the London Council's think tank worry that cuts to public services may indeed feature heavily in the Chancellor's plans. We've seen significant cuts um, already and there are more cuts to our funding uh, to come. Uh, we're really struggling, um, in, uh, particularly in London, with temporary accommodation. There are 50,000 people in temporary accommodation in London um, at the moment. Also, there's a threat to the school's funding formula uh, with a move to a more uniform funding across the country. That could see more than £1,000 per pupil taken away from some boroughs. Um, and that's the equivalent to 6,000 teachers being lost across the capital. And we can't afford that in our schools in, in the capital. For many Londoners and the next mayor, the issue on everyone's mind is the housing crisis. It's massive on the agenda. Housing is a massive priority for the Chancellor and he's going to be uh, supporting it. There's always more, there's always more to do and uh, you're now seeing more construction than at any time in the last 50 years. But some say possible changes to housing legislation in the budget could make things worse for Londoners who rent. The only hope is that it's so much on the agenda and I think people are just beginning to wake up that this is a government and local authority issue of, of not having provided affordable homes when they had it in their power to, that maybe they will wake up to it. Maybe the political pressure and the pressure of the uh, population as a whole is such that they will do something about it. Another major issue facing the capital is how small businesses can continue to make a living. But with the city of big fish, the hope from smaller players is that they'll be given a fair chance. Yeah, at the moment, the banking system is quite nervous and it lacks confidence in investing in ideas. There's a lot of support in early startups and um, kind of small funds to get projects off the ground. Um, but when you're in that middle tier of growth, you haven't quite made enough profit and you don't have enough traction to show your two years worth of trading accounts. But you're in that early stage where you've passed the proof of concept that actually now you need money for orders and you need money for innovation and for development. There's uh, absolutely nothing really that fills that middle gap apart from the online platforms 